Thanks for coming. And the f that, as you can see, it is a U.S. and a China collaboration project. So part of our motivation is, uh, is that we all know that cultural heritage, subject, those objects are irreplaceable and uh, non-renewable. So in order to preserve them, we do need research and public outreach in order to protect those cultural artifacts. Much attention has been paid to this emperor, Qin Shi Huang. He was the very first uh, emperor of China. So Emperor Qin was a good fighter. He conquered the six territories and uh, united the China. That's why he also named himself to be the first emperor of China. And he connected the great, uh, as you can see, the figure, the fortification of the seven territories into the Great Wall of China. Just put into perspective, if you drive from here to Washington, D.C., coming back, you're still short on 500 kilometers. <laughs> and so Emperor gets a little bit worried. He wanted to protect his afterlife. That's how he did the construction of the, the, the whole terracotta army and the king's tomb, which lasted over 38 years. Here's some example of the, uh, initially, you can see the earth surface here, and the, the terracotta actually located in the corridors between those partition walls, about 10 meters deep from the surface, beneath an earth ceiling. Here is an example, is the most famous one, is the pit one when they first discovered, and that, that uh, it, it's under the airport, like an airport aircraft hangar, that, uh, uh, that uh, is no environmental control, so it's open air. This is one of the important factors you need to remember. Um, pet 2 is much smaller. Instead of 1,000 statues, they only restored about 300, and pet 3 is only about 70 statues. So, uh, but the pet 2 and pet 3 have an air-conditioned room. And the museum the curators find out that they do see immediate changes or deterioration uh, occurs after unearthing. You see on the left-hand panel that is before the unearth, four minutes later, just by the humidity change alone, you can see major changes on the surface. That's why this team of American scientists has been called in to help. They're from the Desert Research Institute in Nevada. They're experts on studying air. And they think something in the air is causing the damage. Once scientists know what's in the air, they can start trying to figure out how those elements affect the statues. They take pieces of terracotta from the statues and put them in this chamber. Then they can add some of the elements they've found, like sulfur dioxide, and blast the samples with it. In a short time, they can see what effect those elements have on the clay. Our objective was to determine the factors, such as the one I mentioned, the air pollution, dust fall, and the meteorology inside, outside the museum. And in order to understand the changes over a short period of time, we expose some of the simulated terracotta pieces to controlled pollution level in the chamber. And the, our purpose is trying to make the museum curators and, other, and the government to be aware of the uh, changes and damage on those ancient artifacts and then to recommend some control measures and approaches for sustainability. So most of the sampling was done uh, during the 2006 and 2007, and this is one of the most comprehensive study ever been done for the Terracotta Museum. So when we collect all samples, we do the chemical speciation, uh, we do realize that there are lots of corrosive organics. We did study the losses. Uh, we find out the mineral and the chemical composition are quite complex. So we're trying to find out what are those surface deposits. They are calcite, apatite, and gypsum. So that along with the confirmation from the x-ray, you can see the calcium sulfur. So for now, the China government is going to uh, uh, suspend any more excavation of the remaining 5,500 species until the sustainability can be demonstrated.